Hello, fellow listeners, and thank you for downloading this episode. We had some technical difficulties during our live stream recording of this, which included my microphone being the incorrect one. So we had to pull the audio direct from the stream. So the audio quality is going to be a little bit of an issue for this podcast. I haven't identified the issue, so it shouldn't be an issue going forward. But if you're hearing something a little different than the podcast, that's why. So... Uh, please accept our apologies for the audio quality and we will be back up to snuff next week. But for now, enjoy the show. Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 653, Technical Difficulties, recorded live on October 18th, 2018. Hello everyone, welcome to Pod Tackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I am your host, Dust Storm. I am your co-host, Godzilla T. After troubleshooting more technical issues, we're finally recording this show. We're still having live stream issues. I don't know why my computer hates me. But we are here to talk about more Halo new stuff, and we've got plenty of it to discuss, including some insider stuff coming tomorrow, which will be exciting for those that are in the MCC Insider program. As we always do, though, let's go ahead and kick off with a recap of our community streams. So, GT, give us a recap on how Fragment Fridays went. Uh, it went really well. I uh, had a lot of fun, as usual. Had a good turnout. Everybody seemed to have a lot of fun. Honestly, with the weeks week I've been having, a lot of the details have been lost. Last week was not a fun week for me. And to cap it all off, my dog decided to go on walkabout Friday night before game night. So I just glad that week's over with. I hope this <laughs> week continues to be better. Yeah, I remember you were saying last week it was rough. No yeah. pun intended. <laughs> I, I realized that there was a pun in there after I said it, but no pun intended. Oh, it was rough. <laughs> Just glad that week's over with, and yeah. hope I don't have another one of them for a while. Certainly. Other than that, Fragment Friday, pretty good turnout? Yeah, we got a good turnout. Um, you know, played a mix of games, enjoyed it a lot. Uh, can't wait to do it again till tomorrow night. And we were doing MCC last week. Mm-hmm. It's, it's nice to kind of dip into that every once in a while. We have some. Well, you know. Something a lot of people for this for this week. Yep, a lot of people seem to be enjoying going back and forth between Halo Five and MCC. He just kind of mixes things up for them. You know, we'll continue to do that as long as people enjoy it. You can just uh, message GT if you have a cer- certain inkling for playing MCC or uh, Halo Five. So we're flexible. People want to change it up, we'll change it up a little bit. GT's all right to do that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> For my achievement stream, um, I so I was I'm actually going through the Master Chief Saga playlist kind of separately on my own. I wasn't intending to get one of the score achievements, but I actually did. <laughs> I got the one on the mission regret, so I actually got that one off stream. <gasps> oh. I know, I know. I wasn't even trying, and it's like, oh, wait, I got a score achievement. Cool. I did manage to get an achievement during the stream. Oh, that's right. I think it was, what? Three I wins? got 350 wins. Yeah. I am up, I, I'm somewhere in that range. I got those win achievements to do as well. But that'll just come with playing more MCC. So I got the regret one, and then I got three other ones over the, or was it two or three? Three. I got Oracle, Sacred Icon, and Quarantine Zone, so I have one more, which is Uprising, and I'll finish out my Halo 2 score achievements. So one away from Halo 2, and then I have pretty much on ODST all of the non-Mombasa Street 
our scores. Pretty much all of them. Maybe one of them I got. Otherwise, I think it's the whole th- whole thing. And we did not do my stream with my wife this week because I got she. We had to change up our schedule, so she normally has a um, a doctor's appointment on Thursday or a counseling appointment on Thursday, and we moved it to Tuesday this week. And she got home later than normal, so we canceled this week. And but we'll be back next week for more streaming. I still have four more missions on Halo CE to play through with her to get the story aspect of it. At that point, we'll figure out if I need to take a pause and let her kind of get a little more used to some of the controls, like skipping or switching weapons, driving vehicles, and that kind of stuff. Or if we'll just jump straight into her playing Halo 2. But that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. That's our community streams for the week. Let's go ahead and jump into some news. News, news, news. News. All the news. So the first thing up that we have is the MCC October update. Some of the stuff we did talk about during last episode's show that was covered in the community community update. But there's a couple more details that have been provided to address some specifics as far as the MCC insiders doing playtests this weekend, some more details on the Mask Composer and all that stuff. So just go ahead and um, read through some of that a bit. Uh, the update for MCC dropped yesterday, and that includes a infection playlist. So the rotational playlist is now infection for MCC. There's also a cool little infection nameplate to go with it, which is pretty snazzy. So, GT, here's the, here's the new feature that I added. Ta-da! Yay! So, I just... So, take it away. Maybe it'll fix it. That's nice that they can uh, now see the web page. Yeah. So, I figured, hey, that, that at least is something. So, you can get this nice, cool little inf- infection nameplate for playing in the infection playlist. You have to play it from now until the end of October. So, October 31st. And then you'll get the nameplate. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a pretty cool fit. Uh, nameplate. Looks a lot better than a lot of the ones that are already in there. That's true. They're adding lots of new ones, which is really cool. You know, these new nameplates are just, they have some character to them. They're not just a colored bar. Right, with the static icon on them. Yeah. So going into the match composer. <sighs> Name is subject to change. Postum gives us a little more details on the different things that you can choose. So you can choose the game preset, the which is basically a predefined combination of things. So basically what your matchmaking hopper is today, all the different playlists are the presets. There's also game size, games included, and game types included. So the preset options that they have are Team Slayer, which is 4v4 Team Slayer, Big Team Battle, which is 8v8 Team Slayer and Objectives, Team Objectives, which is 4v4 Objective Games, and Infection, which is 12-player Infection. And then Custom is the preset where you can actually go and define all the specifics. So the game size, uh, you can choose either 1v1, 2v2, 4v4, 12-player, which is Infection, or 8v8. And on the games selection, has all five games. has Halo CE, Halo 2, Halo 2 Anniversary, Halo 3, and Halo 4. And then on games types selection, we have Slayer, Oddball, SWAT, Snipers, Action Sack, Griffball, which is Halo 3 and Halo 4 only, Capture the Flag, Assault, which does not include a Halo CE, King of the Hill, and Infection. And then there is a little matrix of... Combinations that are supported. Go ahead and put those up on the screen for those that are watching. And that gets you the different combinations of things that you can select. So it's pretty cool that this is actually pretty close to coming out. Mm hmm. I'll we'll have to hop in the Insider this weekend and kind of check it out. We'll get to those uh, play dates here in a little bit. I like how people are using the stream to chat between Mixer and YouTube. That's pretty cool. Well, I mean, the restream server does have the 
ability to repost text, but it gets counted in there or, or crowded in the chat really quick. I just, it's really cool to see them actually interacting with each other through the stream uh-huh. on the chat. So it's, uh, it's cool. We got gamer yeah. Jay Lee, uh, on YouTube talking with, uh, destiny halo Naruto on the mixer side. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Next up in the update, the controller customization options are also one of the new things, which I am happy for because it's going to make Halo 3 actually playable for me. Or at least more, in, I mean, it's, it's playable, but more enjoyable for for me. I don't know if that would help you at all. You can, oh, yeah. You can, it'll, it'll help customize the thumbstick fill for me, so that's good. So for the new options that they have included, it is horizontal and vertical look sensitivities. <laughs> So basically, you can change for whatever sticky you're looking, or whatever axis on either one of the sticks. It will change how quickly you can change how quickly you move side to side or look up and down independently. For me, that's going to help fix the Halo Three issue. Of course, not that little triangle craziness. You can also change the look acceleration, and you can also change the look dead zone. All of those things. So are, if you have a one of those controllers that likes to drift. Exactly. As for the next thing, we have the MCC build is now out, and play test times are the next coming weekends, including this coming weekend tomorrow. So on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for October night, the weekend of October nineteenth and the weekend of October twenty sixth, for all the insiders who were part of the insider program before, you still have access to this. Play tests are from ten a.m. to one p.m. Pacific and 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific, and those translate to 1 to 4 Eastern and 9 to midnight Eastern every day. And the two things that they're testing are these two new additions, the Match Composer and the Controller Customization Options. So those two things are what they're going to be testing in this Insider build. They are going to open up more insider registration later on down the road, but for this build, they have not opened it up to any new insiders. So if, if you were an insider before, you're great, but if you weren't an insider before, unfortunately, you're going to miss out on this one. Which, you know, I think is actually good, to, you know, not for the people that are not are already in it, but it'll give a 343 a chance to see how many people are really wanting to participate in you know, the testing new features thing. And then they can adjust yeah. on, you know, how many more they want, you know, how many more people they need to let in um, to get accurate tests off of that. And for the most part, I don't think there's, there's too much that they're probably going to get like feedback on, on this other than how good does it feel? And is like does it mm-hmm. work the way that people are expecting it? Because it seems like just through the updates, everything is pretty well ironed out. It's just yeah, seeing what people's initial reactions are to it, I guess. Yeah, uh, it, and it's probably also there to find any potential bugs, you know, because we all know how MCC does in the wild. But that's why they have the insiders to help identify exactly. some of the bugs out in the wild. You know, no matter what they do, testing in their own environment it's never going to be the equal of having the game out in the wild. You know, when you're dealing with, as we learned by the initial MCC distances. Yeah. When you're dealing with (laughs) distances, different internet speed connections, different players, different firewalls. You you just can't test for all that in, um, you know, a controlled environment. Speggy, (laughs) <laughs> posted in Mixer, confirmed Master Chief is hiding out in Dust Place of Residence. And the f- for a second, yeah. I didn't know what he was talking about, but then I realized I have one of the standing Master Chiefs over in the back corner. <laughs> That's Mini Chief. Yeah. He, That's he's, not Master Chief. That's Mini Chief. He's tiny. He's tiny. <laughs> I think that one's three feet tall? No, not... Uh, yeah. yeah, about three feet tall. And then Miso's saying... So a third of his height. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Miso was oh, saying, did you hear Mini Mini passed away? No. Oh, wait. This was was this this was a while ago, right? Uh, I think a week or two. I, really? I was that recent? That. I thought it was. Maybe it was longer than that, but 
I, I do remember seeing something about him passing away, but I thought it was I, like a couple I, months ago. I just ago. heard about it, so. Naruto saying a few months ago. Well, that's sad. So we'll have to rely on Mini Chief. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Misa said in the chat earlier, tried the MCC Insider earlier and no one was on. And I don't think there's yeah, going that doesn't to surprise me. I, yeah, I don't I'm not gonna expect too many people on until the play tests. Because the retail MCC is now working pretty well, so a lot of people I think are gonna stick to that until the play tests come around. Oh, what's on the mic, Destiny Halo? Uh I've got quite a few things actually on this, but what you're seeing is the Cortana chip keychain. I have the Master Chief helmet keychain. And I've got up here in the corner, I have a portal cube and a Millennium Falcon. And down here, I have a Stargate and a um, er, aquarium keychain that my wife got me. And then this is a dog tag. It has uh, my gamer tag on it and Potacular and, oh gosh, Cyberline Films. That's a blast from the past. I remember <laughs> reaching on it too. A little tour of my microphone stand. I'm bringing the other ones into view. There you go. Portal Cube and Millennium Falcon. It's a little decoration. That's why he stays away from the microphone, so he didn't accidentally bump it and deafen everybody. Yep, pretty much. Because <laughs> I do this, it's like, I gotta go clean that up. I'll just leave it in there for the sake of leaving it in there. <laughs> Moving on, this is the part where we get to the scoop. Trademarked. And there's quite a few interesting little bits in here. Did you get a chance to read through this whole thing, GT? Not completely, no. Okay. So the first one is actually pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Because it kind of leans towards some features they would like to implement, but they don't know if it's going to be made publicly available. Essentially what they're doing, though, is they are actually able to import legacy user-generated content from their original games into MCC. So custom maps, forged maps from Halo 3 and Halo 4, they have the ability to now import that into MCC, which is pretty yeah, cool. It, it's pretty cool, but I, I just wonder how much work it is actually to do that. <laughs> which is yeah. probably something why it won't be available to the general public. Yeah. Unfortunately uh, it has currently the restriction is to them internally because of some of the tricks that they have to do to actually get it to work and they would like to make it publicly available. But right now they said they pretty much said, yeah, it's not likely going to happen. Which is, I mean, it makes sense. There's a, there's a lot of technical stuff in the update, which if you want to read through it, you definitely can go over there. But there's some stuff about encoding and compression and having to have different utilities to actually pull it out. And then uh, Sean says, we well, think it would be cool for one day for you to be able to somehow import your legacy file share, but it's only a dev-only feature right now, and they have to manually move files over one by one, and they're doing that specifically to enhance the matchmaking hoppers. So they're taking probably mm -hmm. like some of the popular custom maps. For example, the whole Halo 3 craze for competitive, maybe they could pull in uh, Onset, which is one of the Forge maps on Foundry. Yeah. Or maybe pull in the Halo 3 Griffball court that was forged in the original game, mm -hmm. or some of the other ones, and, and pull those into matchmaking. Misa, this one is the MCC October update on Waypoint. That's what this is from. So that's the first bit of the scoop. Second bit is a little more old school uh, type of integration in with MCC. So they're trying to go through and grab some of the older audio files and other things that were in uh, Halo CE on the Xbox version. And there's some other things that they're doing because... MCC being based off the PC version doesn't have all the fine detail stuff for some of the intricacies that the original Xbox version had. And there were some things that when they ported from Xbox to PC that were changed. And there's actually a separate group that Sean calls out that's been 
It's called Halo CE Refine on Reddit. And what they're doing is trying to fix, quote unquote, the Halo PC port to be more Xbox accurate. So they're actually, they're working together on being able to integrate some of that into the MCC version. So the MCC version is more like the original Xbox version. That'll be cool. Just don't take my flamethrower. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's something that they'll be taking away. But I think I it's, hope not. it's more... It has to do, based on just reading the article, it has more to do with the audio and certain tunings of uh, weapons, some of the weapons, and then also some of the textures, how they interact with the map geometry. Yeah. That's, that seems to be the gist of it. Another thing that they also hinted at, too is they mentioned Halo Custom Edition and some of the work that they're talking about being able to re-enable old sound systems in Halo Engine plus changing the way that it works with OGG Vorbis in order to support Custom Edition maps. That would be nice. And it doesn't come out and specifically say, hey, we're looking to support all the modern ma- maps that are that were made for Halo Custom Edition, but well, maybe, maybe they are because the first thing says in order to properly support Custom Edition, so maybe they are trying to support Custom Edition just out of the box. Yeah, which would be awesome. Yeah, I don't know that they'll let you. Chaos I just kind of wonder if they're going to let you directly port or import maps from Custom Edition. I wonder if that's something kind of like the. You know the older custom games that they're pulling that they'll they'll pull out uh, like they'll or be the review gate- independently. They'll be the gatekeepers and they'll yes. add them. Yeah, be a good point. Still be cool. Really oh yeah, cool. don't get me wrong; it'd still be cool. Because <laughs> you know, there's a, yeah, for Halo custom, custom Edition. There's a lot of good maps out there. There is, and for those that have Halo Custom Edition, hce.halomaps.org is a great resource for creating your own content or looking up other users' content to either add into your own maps or download maps to play. There's also a couple of different custom campaigns that have been made. I know one of my fun times is playing Chaos Skulch. The assault rifle fires rockets. The shotgun fires fuel rods. <laughs> it's a whole heck of a lot of fun. It's, it's chaotic because it's Chaos Skulch, but it's, it's, it's fun for a little bit. Yeah, I can just imagine that. Uh, well, I mean, you can do that in Halo 5 now, you know, without having the map editor. Well, at least that level of one. But right. yeah, there, there's a weapon was, glitch that they decided to leave. The glitch that they support. Which I'm really glad that they left it there because it makes for a lot of fun. Yeah, it's 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 really cool that they did that. I think it leaves... Just room for more customization in there, and it really helps. There's also some quality of life improvements. A couple of minor things, but some things that are looking to come out in a future update. So they have been they actually in, included in the September update changing enemy font to red, and apparently some people didn't like that, so they're working on a toggle to where you can choose either enemies showing up in blue text or which is the origin, original text or in red text as in the current games if you looking at an enemy name tags that come up are red over their head but in Halo 1 and Halo 2 every person that you looked at was blue whether it was an ally or an opponent so they're working on a toggle for that there's also some feedback uh, stuff that they're reminding everybody just the feedback threads that you can go uh, submit feedback on the Waypoint forums. There's also Twitter and Reddit for social media platforms and a bunch of other things. They have the Trello board that they're also tracking everything that you can go see what they're doing. That's pretty much it for this specific update. So lots of cool stuff. If you have the chance to play on the NPC Insider this weekend, definitely recommend it. There's also going to be the next weekend to test it. And I guess this is probably going to be something that will be implemented Probably next month, right? Looks that way. Get in there if you're an insider. Help play test, and 
see you on the battlefield. Moving over to our next article, and I forgot to actually include this one in the show notes, so sorry about that, GT, but it's the Halloween Infection. And we have some maps that are debuting in the Halloween Infection playlist. There's no real map overview screens that that kind of help with map layout, so I'm not going to show them. But there is looks like six six maps, new maps and new modes, and there's going to be a double XP at the end of the month. Uh, one map is called Castle Raid. Uh, another one's called Speed Demons, and those are for just regular infection type variants. There's also called something called linear infection. Yeah, that's where you have to. The map opens up in stages, uh, and the human players have a linear path that they have to travel. Kind of like the Left 4 Dead remakes in Halo. Well, I don't know. You have to tell me. Okay. <laughs> um, but basically, you advance to a point. You have to defend that point for a certain number of seconds, then it the door opens and you can move on to the next stop. You have to depend that for a few more seconds and then whoever makes it to the map, to the end of the map is the winner. If anybody makes it to the end of the map. It's, it is possible to do it. Mm-hmm. It can get difficult, though, if you have a really good set of zombies. Well, throughout, the, throughout it, you get better and better weapons. Which helps you progress along and Gives you a fighting chance to actually win. Mm-hmm. Got a couple of new followers. Well, it's nice users. that you're putting... Thanks for following guys and or gals. Yeah, definitely. You are. It's nice to see a variety in the infection playlist and not just regular infection over and over again. It definitely helps keeps... think, yep, keep things fresh. <laughs> yeah, that's where keeps going. it from getting stale. You know, that's one of the problems and one of the reasons I don't play infection a lot is because it's basically the same thing over and over again same for me it, i don't get much enjoyment out of it but some of the twists off of it like the linear stuff i'm i'm okay with mm-hmm. yeah and stuff like track trash compactor which uses uses infection but it's really a custom mini game type of thing yeah but you know the nice thing about a, a lot of these um it's still basically infection one team kills the other team to grow stronger. Uh, where you know, we're like in trash compactor, you have one life. Um, you die, you just watch the rest of the match. It's yeah. good to have, you know, those type of games in matchmaking. That way, the player is constantly uh, involved, um, and that's probably one of the downfalls of breakout. Because if you die early in the match, then you just have to sit there and watch. And then the way they fix the camera, you can't even help your teammates. Yeah, you have to like switch back and forth between them just to get an updated angle. Well, no, you can't. You can, you can just sit there and look at your death cam and not even move the camera. Oh, I thought you, you used to be able to switch to a teammate after you died. I guess that's changed in re- in regular Slayer, yeah, but not in not in Breakout. I mean, in Breakout, so that that must have changed since I last played it. Which, to be honest, I haven't played Breakout since. I haven't played. Launch. I honestly haven't played Breakout since launch. And at launch, you couldn't change your camera. I thought you you could switch it between teammates, but you couldn't move it around. Yeah, I. Honestly, it's been so long, I can't even remember for sure. I know you were really restricted on what you could do with your camera. I remember being able to call out, oh, he's around this corner. But yeah, it's been so long since I've touched Breakout. I probably have all the combinations to to work on it, too, if I really wanted to. Yeah, I do, too. So that supports infection on Halo 5, and again, there's also the infection mode on the playlist for MCC as well. So you've got plenty of opportunities for infection, whether it's in Halo 5 or in Halo MCC. So fun stuff. We also have, oh, we got some cheer somewhere. Guessing that's Confal again with uh, 27. Yep. Thanks to Confal yep. for the cheer over on Twitch. Appreciate that. Next article we have is to this week's 
Halo Spotlight. And it is packed full of goodies, so I'm going to change my camera over to my Xbox again. And we'll just go on down the road, because there are some really, 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 really cool things in this week's Spotlight. I'm happy to actually be able to go through it this time. So this first one is done by someone called Auditor. And this is actually a supposed to be a scene of ancient humans defeating forerunners in a in a battle. Pretty incredible. It is it definitely has that uh, futuristic vibe to it, and it's it's interesting to see how I like in this particular piece how much the human armor actually does kind of match up with the Promethean armor. So the Prometheans are the ones that are supposed to, like laying on the ground that are supposed to be dead. Then the the human armor is very similar. Although I, I can kind of see in the leg of the one human uh, like in the front right where it looks like you can kind of see that in the Mjolnir armor a little bit. It kind of looks like he's got to go pee the way he's holding his knees. Huh? I'm, I'm the curious. character is standing up on the far right. If you look, he's holding his knees together. Oh, <laughs> didn't even notice that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's funny. <laughs> it kind of makes it look like he's got to go pee. Yeah, it does. Anyway, no, it is. A, it's a really cool picture. I like that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if that's the whole picture or not, but it's, it's really well done. I kind of wish that was official artwork. Yeah. So th- that one is a, a special feature that they decided to show off this week. And there is a description down there kind of giving a little bit of detail uh, from the author behind how he made it, what he made it to resemble. The armor belonging to the Crouching Human is based off the Sphinx helmet that he made a while back. So there's there's some stuff influenced by previous stuff he's made. And there's also a couple of things that he got permission to use from Lord Akiran Volstad. So lots lots of cool influences in this picture. Sure. Most definitely. Yeah, take a look over on the update. It is really cool. I know us describing it doesn't really do justice on the audio podcast, so sorry for that, but for those that are watching in the live stream. Yeah, definitely go check it out. You're seeing it. Yeah, and you can it's on the Halo Waypoint website. You can go check it out. This next comic I got a kick out of. This was really good. And this, yeah, I, I like it too. This plays off of the Halo 4 Eggheads comment from Palmer during Spartan Ops. So it's it's a comic with a an elite major and Spartan Palmer. And in my mind, the first thing I was thinking of is the one elite from Halo 5 that was writing the poem to Palmer. <laughs> yeah. You never know, it might be the same one. Yes, I mean, in my head, I was thinking of the same one, so why not? So the Elite starts off saying, Greetings, human named Commander Palmer. I have for you a gift, which I understand is a custom in human courting rituals. (laughs) And that that was one of the reasons why I was thinking it was the Elite from Halo 5, because of that, that comment. I hear you speak quite often of heads of the egg variety. (laughs) They are meddlesome. I have prepared a whole field of eggheads. We will break them all together. They are puny and without honor, and their destruction will bring us eternal glory. Maybe after we can get milkshakes or something. And then the last one is Palmer, blushing with little hearts coming off of it. So much for Lasky. Oh. (laughs) Oh. Dang. That was good. (laughs) <laughs> Probably broke Brent's heart too. Oh wow! <laughs> that got the mixer chat talking. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, moving on. <laughs> so that comic was done by Dairy Boy, Com- Dairy Boy Comics. You can find more of them over at DairyBoyComics.com. I don't know if this is something that is a regular Halo comic or not. But it's pretty funny nonetheless. Yeah. It's it's hilarious. I liked it. Next one we have is a really awesome render from Ezel. Uh, Ezel Effects. 
And yeah, I'm I'm speechless. This one is insane. This is the render is based off of the scene from Halo Two where you're as the arbiter with forget the shipmaster's name. Uh but you're in with the shipmaster and it's their first encounter to the flood. No, this is yeah, this is uh looks like this is the room where they first see the heretic as well. Yep. I forget which mission it's specifically called. Um, the heretic. No, I thought the heretic was the one before, and then there's the one like this, like right after he- the heretic. No, this is this is uh, this is the beginning of the heretic, I believe. Well, not necessarily. Well, maybe not. Because they're like for Halo Two, you have the ones where it's like the two in one, two in the next. And I thought there was one where I thought the heretic was the one where you start chasing him in the first part and then the name changes for the second part. I'm trying <laughs> to find a, a ordered list of the, the campaign levels to Same here. Uh let's see. Oscar's Metropolis, the Arbiter the Oracle. It's the mission of the Oracle. The Heretic is the, is the first is the cutscene mission. Then the first Arbiter playable mission is the Arbiter, and then the Oracle. So it's the Oracle. Okay, the yeah. Beginning of the Oracle. Yeah. Even still, it looks freaking wicked. Yes, Pins. I know I played it this last week. It doesn't necessarily mean I know which mission it was off the top of my head by name. Okay. <laughs> Just because I play it doesn't mean I know what the name of it is. <laughs> we don't pay attention to mission names. We just play the game. Right? <laughs> yes, me, so I agree with you. New wallpaper. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you could... Wallpapers for days. Oh, uh, St. Helium Flood Character Renders by Harispus. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's really cool. <sighs> so, yep, you can check out uh, Joshua e- Ezel over on Ezel of vfx.rstation.com Next one we have here is a cosplay of George, which is really cool. Uh-huh. Like, this one's been out there for a little while. This one is a legit George. Yeah. And, you know, I like... Stances matches, too. Uh-huh. Well, I like the fact, well, the background is almost perfect because it almost doesn't give you any scale so it makes the person kind of look as big as george as well that's a good point yeah the background helps not clue in anything specifically to yeah one i mean you know there's you can't really it's hard to find a background that doesn't provide something for scale but they did a pretty good job of picking that one they really did George is awesome. Mm-hmm. Next thing we have here is someone working on a didact face mask for, I guess, a cosplay that they're working on. It looks pretty legit, actually, when it's on the mannequin head. When it's off, the, the one on the bottom right looks a little, a little weird. No. Well, otherwise, you know, it looks you, great. The, with the mask, it probably flattens out when you, uh, you know, roll it or. Uh, put it on your hand so but yeah no it looks looks awesome that is at K- or Kleb Maher on Twitter next one we have is <clears throat> I don't know what that is but it's basically an anime style drawing and it's kids playing on an elite and it looks like the elite's getting frustrated <laughs> <laughs> can I translate in Edge on Xbox does not look like I can no. Sorry, folks. <laughs> it looks cool nonetheless. Then we also have a couple of pencil drawings. The first one is a uh, flying Singhealy Ranger, dual wielding plasma pistols. Next one is pretty funny, another uh, pencil painting by the same person uh, at Pickled Gear on Twitter. And it is a jackal and a Orvid, which I guess they're. It's kind of like a raven or a crow or something like that. And it has two little question marks above it because jackals are kind of 
old bird. But they're they're related to the avian thing or something in the lore, something like that. So you have yeah. both the birds kind of like question, like having the question mark to each other. <laughs> It'd be funny if they had their heads cocked to the one side. Yeah. Uh, the caption is, are we related? <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And that's, so the first one was drawing number 11 and the second was drawing 13. So he's doing a drawing basically every day for the month of October. Next one is a uh, render by Halo Codex, and it's the sword and the stone. So there's an energy shield and a stone, and it's a pretty static image. It just has like the dust or pollen particles floating around it. But other than that, it's a, it's a still image for the most part. That's by the Halo Codex on Twitter. Next one is a uh, Marines versus Flood wallpaper, which looks really really cool. So there's another wallpaper for everyone. Looking for new wallpapers. Next one is a retro style picture uh, with Master Chief saying, I need a weapon. <laughs> Very retro. That is by At Prison Winter. Next one is a, I don't know if this is, okay, yeah, this is a, a render. Looks like SFM and Blender used for this one, but it's Master Chief standing in kind of a, a, Stationed armory type place. And this is by Herospex, Herospex as well. Uh, Point Break Isaac Can Afford Tribute. So also some great work there. Some more uh, pencil and pen drawings. This one's by Sarah Welsh of The Arbiter. Uh, we also have another artwork by The Game World, which I, I like to call the Arbiter Firefox. <laughs> It, it definitely resembles the Firefox logo. So it's the Arbiter without any armor on, and at the top of his face it has orange flames, and as it goes down his back towards the sword, it changes into blue. So it looks really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Arbiter Firefox. I'm, I'm trying to think of a way to mix the two terms, but I can't. <laughs> that, that makes it sound okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, but there's there's that one. There's Night of the Living Photos, which is a, a kind of a cartoon style drawing. And there is there are two. It looks like kind of in the style of Halo Three on Epitaph or something. And then you just have a Photos helmet head with an octopus sticking out of it. Uh, I don't even want to know where he's going to stick that horn. Ah, okay, moving on. <laughs> Uh, we also have some a little more retro style artwork that's been like, done, like retro game cartridges. Uh-huh. Or, uh huh. Or you have a Halo Four Master Chief, a Halo CE Master Chief, and a Halo Two Master Chief. All very retro style. Yeah, game cartridge. That that makes perfect sense actually. Actually, and that's at Playbox Thirty Six. We have some cosplay by the Grand Slap. I wish I could see some of these cosplays at, at conventions. But the you ones know, at conventions aren't nearly this good sometimes. There are some every now and then, but usually not like this. You know, looking at these, it almost looks like they're just moving a Halo figure around the yard. You know, like a Halo action figure. Yeah. I can see how it looks like that because it, and that's probably just like the texture that they use to build the armor. But yeah, I, I can definitely uh-huh. see where you're. Well, I mean, at. it's just kind of the way they use the the camera. Uh, they shot the, the pictures. You go the the chief is really sharp, but the background's really fuzzy. The depth of field. Yeah. I mean, it it looks like a cosplay. I, maybe it isn't a cosplay. No, it's a cosplay. I mean, that's that's what it looks like. Like. Yeah, maybe it's not. I don't know. You can you can do a lot of crazy things with perspective on camera. Uh-huh. But, I mean, it, it looks like cosplay. I mean, I can click into one of these pictures and maybe that. Oh no, that is a figure. I think Penz is right. I think that is a figure. Still looks good. Yeah, they're good. Wow, I was, I was convinced. Wow, no, that that is a figure. No, good good eye, Penz. Good eye. Wow. No, you're right. You're totally right. Back to. 
spotlight. Yeah, nope, that's a figure. You're you're right on that one. Also has some tattoo artwork. It's uh, basically what they did was making it look like the Mjolnir armor is peeking out of his chest, like ripped out. Oh, uh, we got some more. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry, that one just makes me cringe. <laughs> <laughs> I I would never think about getting a tattoo personally. It looks amazing. Well, I mean, I thought about getting a ta- tattoo, but not there. <laughs> right. There's about only one more one more sensitive area on the human body. We'll just leave it at that. Grim cat. Grim cat. Let's see what else we have on here. Cat Reaper. Uh, we also have another render, it looks like. This one is a dedication to Isaac Hannah Ford. Uh, looks like just kind of a recreation. It's Master Chief in the midst of Marines. Height is very appropriate. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's a, another render by the rookie, or rookie two four five. Uh, it was called Starry Night as a, and it was made as a promo work for a story that he is writing. Thanks, Confound, for more. I'm, I'm more bits. Yeah, it's it's face palm bits though. But thanks for that, anyways. <laughs> yeah, there's there's lots of stuff. We can just keep going and going and going. I'll hit the highlights. Uh, this is another cosplay one with the Halo CE style Master Chief and Halo 4 style Master Chief. Another tattoo has Cortana and Master Chief and Halo sign on it. Uh, this one is by uh, Arma, who I actually know. Graduation photo of him in his Spartan suit on uh, Panther. This one is really cool. Someone is doing a, what do you call this, woodwork piece mm-hmm. of Warlock from Halo. Looks like they're using a water jet. Okay. <laughs> water jet or a laser. I don't know. No, wait a minute. Those, I, I don't know. With, with the, but it's cool looking stuff. Yeah. And it is legitimately, it, it looks like Warlock pretty much. Mm-hmm. There's, there's still a couple things left. Like he has pretty much the first floor done. He doesn't have any of the, the second level stuff except for the center tower. You can definitely tell it's Warlock just by oh, yeah. the picture. This one's funny. <laughs> uh, tweeted out by Unishek. I guess this, this is his drawing of a grunt with a plasma pistol. As, I've uh, seen worse. <laughs> yeah. Probably from me. Uh, <laughs> Halo Collector was saying that the Warlock wood thing is laser work, which kind of makes sense because looks like there's kind of some of the laser burn stuff on the edges. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. On to forges. We have a couple of things to highlight in the forge section. Brewski went and I don't know if like he read, remade this or he helped remake this with someone else, but it is a forged map of the Ice Canyon from the Assault on the Control Room mission. Oh, that's cool. Actually, okay, so reading the tweet, it was made by Infinite10S on Twitter, and he's just posting it, but it still looks really cool. I saw someone actually playing it on a stream earlier this week, and I thought it was really cool. So the one canyon where you fight the second Wraith, and then when you're actually playing the two betrayals, it's the one where the second pulse generator is. It's that section right there. So there's that, and then they're also bringing uh, featured content back for Halo 5. So there's going to be a featured section that will be regularly updated now. Well, that's good. I wonder how they're they're going to choose the features. If it's going to be something where, if it's on the spotlight, it'll be featured, or if it's going to be in collaboration with Forge Hub or something like that. I'm curious to know how that's going to work. Supposedly, there'll be Updating the featured maps again. Uh, I don't. I if we played it this Saturday, I was not playing it, Misa. And well, this would have been. I think you were probably playing it before I joined because I don't remember us playing it together. Must have been before I joined on Saturday. Uh, for videos, there is a by Riffley. It's called Hey uh, Ultimate Theme Mashup and. It is really good. They actually mixed the song of 
songs very well. And they have to do some tuning correction to get the pace to match up sometimes, but this is really well done. I definitely recommend checking it out. Did you get a chance to listen to this one, GT? Uh, no, I did not. I, I would encourage you and everyone listening to this to take a listen to this. It's a little over seven minutes long, and it incorporates the theme from every Halo game, including the Halo Wars games, including the Spartan Assault and Spartan Strike games. Every Halo game. Well, every official Halo game incorporates the themes. It is really well done. And then the last minute or so is three or four different songs mashed together. And it actually works really well. There's some some of the bits where you can tell they're kind of conflicting with each other, but it's it's a straight up mashup without really changing anything except for maybe pacing and tone of a particular piece. Other than, yeah. that, other than that, it is a straight up mashup of all the themes and it is really well done. I haven't watched any, well, there was one other video I watched, but <clears throat> the next one listed is one by Halo Cannon talking about the current state of the portal at void, which is the space portal you take in Halo three to go to the arc. So he has a video on that. There is a video by Noob Reaction going into the history of the Warthog. It's kind of a Vidoc style video talking about how the Warthog has changed and evolved over time. There is a new Mishima series by uh, Chief Please. It's called Recall. And the description here is mere months have passed after the victory of humanity and elites led by Master Chief against the alien threat, the Covenant. Bandit Spartans must re-enter a world where fighting is always lingering despite what is believed. So they linked the first episode in that Machinima series there. There is another uh, little Machinima short by Team Omega called A Beautiful Morning. has a really funny ending to it, so I recommend going and watch that one. There is also the one that we talked about last week where the folks behind the Termatious Trick- Trickosity team were able to pilot the Falcon on Exodus. We talked about that one a little bit last week. Then Hidden Experience video, latest video is titled The Spartan Armor Designed to Counter the Flood. That's the videos for this week. And then we're on to the Halo Spotlights, which includes so many different things. <laughs> there, There's a lot to hit up on Halo Spotlight stuff. A lot of the stuff is Halo screenshots, but there's a lot of Forza stuff in there. And you can actually customize your Warthog a lot. So this first one by um, TJ Campbell has some really cool Forza screenshots in there. Uh, Halo's CE Anniversary, there's more of those taking advantage of the new Blind Skull that's in the game. Let me know if I hit one that is of particular interest to you, GT. There's an infection picture that was done to kind of help I go along with the infection playlists that are out now. Uh, what else do we have on here? Uh, there's some Halloween themed screenshots by Mr. Skits, and ha- he has different theme colors for kind of an effective variant of a Spartan. So there's Reaper, which is orange, holding a gravity hand. Well, a couple of them are gra- holding gravity hammers. There's Revenant, which is green, phantom, purple, and wraith. Uh, this one by Halo Tutor is is pretty cool. I don't I think this is probably a render, but this has <clears throat> Master Chief looking up to Phantoms and Banshees flying ahead and or flying overhead. And there's also some OGS to drop pods, so it's kind of a call back to some Halo Two promotional type stuff. That's pretty cool. Uh, what else do we have? Someone by TJ one for <laughs> this is fun. Uh, the Halo Codex made a picture, and there is a line in Halo Two where Sarge, uh, or where one of the Marines says, "Dear Sarge, uh, kicking ass in outer space. Wish you were here." And it's basically like a side scene of Master Chief and the Hog filled with Marines, and it's basically supposed to be a postcard. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of thinking about printing it and making it, making a postcard. Making it a postcard, yeah. And just, and just sending it to all my friends. It would work. It would work. 
Yeah, plenty of more Forza and screenshot pics in here. Is there anything that sticks out to you specifically for me to highlight? No. No. Lots of really cool stuff. Uh, the Forza stuff is really cool. Uh, there's a couple of art pieces in here. There's one in here by uh, Dragon Alb. This is kind of a cartoony drawing of pretty much a whole different gambit of characters playing Halo. So you have a monitor, you have an elite, ma- you have a Master Chief, an ODST, a Jackal, a Grunt, and an, a carrier form with a little infection form on top. And all of them are playing Xbox except for Master Chief, who, which is holding a tea bag <laughs> in a in a eyeglass piece. And then you have a, a green monitor in the background as well. That one is pretty cool. Yeah. I like that one. That it's a really cool art piece. Yeah. I like it. Is there anything else that sticks out? Oh, so this is something new that is kind of Halo news ish, but it was someone actually took the avatar and did something with it. So the for the new avatar system that Xbox has, they have the Master Chief armor available to purchase and you can actually um, buy the armor for your avatar over at they have a short link for it aka.ms slash Master Chief Avatar and someone <clears throat> went and I, I guess this is either something within the avatar creator thing or something but basically has Master Chief surfing on a hoverboard in outer space that's pretty cool and that pretty yeah. much brings it to the bottom of that update. Yep, that's pretty much it. So that's all the official stuff that we have for this week. Have to tweak with the Xbox browser thing at some other point in time, but here it works for now. You can at least go through some of the stuff without trying to stumble through it. So at least for those that are watching, know what we're talking about, and unfortunately for those on the audio. Just got to check out the articles and see what we're talking about. On to some other news that we have. We already touched on some of the playlist rotation stuff. So in Halo 5, Big Team Super Fiesta is now out. Triple Team is still in there for its second week. And the Halloween Infection playlist is now in there, which we talked a little bit about earlier. Then on MCC... We also have the new Infection playlist there as well. I haven't had a chance to play either one of those. I was trying to address some technical stuff before the show and didn't get around to actually playing anything. So, play some more over the weekend. See what it's like. Just a reminder for the Halloween Infection on Halo 5, though. Or, sorry, for MCC. Make sure you play between now and October 31st, and then you'll get the nameplate in... Reminder from last week on some Halo Wars 2 related stuff. The Halo Wars Competitive League Season 2 has some more events coming up. On October 20th, there's the Halo Wars 2 Qualifier Tournament, which is being hosted by the Banished. And then the finals for this season are on October 27th, which is going to be an invitational. And that will be streamed by the Banished as well. Coming up this weekend is going to be a free play weekend for Halo Wars 2 on Xbox and Halo Wars the Definitive Edition on Steam. So if you do not have either one of those games and you want to try them out, then you have this weekend to do so, starting today, actually. So go check out Halo Wars 2 or Halo Wars Definitive Edition if you want to get a chance to play it and see what it's like. Maybe you have never put your foot in the RTS realm and just want to see what it's about. This is a great opportunity to see if it's something that you would like or not. For, uh, let's see, the tweets, we have the official announcement for Halo Renegades. This was the, a lot of the books now get kind of like posted early on Amazon or some other sites because of like the listings there. But we got the cover of Halo Renegades. This one is uh, going to be continuing the story of uh, Ryan or Rion, I'm not sure how the proper way to say that is, but Ryan Forge, and she, for those who uh, don't know, is the daughter of Lieutenant Forge, Sergeant Forge, Sergeant from from Halo, Halo Wars. Wars, 
and she's been in a couple of other written pieces. Her first appearance was in Halo Fractures Into the Fire, and then she had a, a whole separate book dedicated to her Halo Smoke and Shadow. And then Halo Renegades will be her third appearance in the story. And <clears throat> the art piece behind the cover is Rion Forge being followed by a Promethean soldier. It's a blue Promethean soldier. Maybe it's a library controlled one? Librarian controlled uh, one? No, actually, have you re- read the book yet? Okay. Started it. I read through the first third. Never mind. Okay. Uh, then I, I won't spoil it for you then. Okay. <clears throat> uh, but I would definitely get caught up on your reading. Yeah. Now my goal um, is to finish this trilogy and, and read, catch up. But uh, yeah, the, one of the going theories is that it's a character in that's already been established. Oh, okay. Hush pins. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyways, uh, that was announced this week. It is available on Amazon. The Kindle version is eleven ninety nine. The paperback version is twelve seventy five, and the audio book audio book version is fourteen eighty eight. I wonder how they come up with some of these numbers sometimes. I have noticed that audio book costs have been coming down. That's good. I mean, it used to be the audiobook versions were double what a Kindle was. It also might depend on who's actually voicing the audiobook. Like, if it's a high-profile person voicing the audiobook. No, I mean just from the last few books. Um, oh. You know, like, the people that uh, voiced the Kilo 5 trilogy, I can't even think of his name. Um, but, yeah, it it's just... It seems like the audio audio books are getting more in line with the paper and Kindle versions. Interesting. But if they would have gotten Buck to voice his book, or uh, oh yeah, Nathan books Fillion. about Buck, I yeah, I I would have paid thirty bucks for the book. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I didn't I didn't know that was something that was being, I guess, coming down. Good, I guess. I do like the little touch on the cover of the little Ace of Spades card in reference to Mm -hmm. her ship. That's Mm -hmm. really cool. I actually did start reading the book at some point. I think I got a third of the way through, and then I... Well, you're going to need to listen listen to it or read it. it. Yep. Nope, I know. I know. Speaking of which, I, I sent you something. Have you used it? I have not used it, but I've noticed actually kind of on my drive to and from work, I have been listening to podcasts, and this week I've, there's actually been points where I've completely missed out on certain sections of podcasts I'm listening, so I, as, much as, as much as I appreciate it, I don't think it's going to work for me. Uh, well, try it anyway. Okay. I'll give it a try. I just got to figure out how far I got to skip ahead and to get well, where Well, I'll just start from the beginning. And listen to it. That way you know how much you, you miss. Okay. No, I didn't even think about doing it that way. That's a good idea. You know, if you don't remember hearing that part of the book, then you missed it. Very good point. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. I will give that a shot. Misa, you're probably closer to being caught up than Dust is. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I am behind on probably nine or ten books at this point. Oh, did you just start reading? She says she's on the flood. Oh, okay. Well, dust isn't quite that far behind. <laughs> okay, so you just started reading. So yeah, no, I've got a long way to go. But it looks like an exciting book. I, I, that story is definitely one of the. As I was reading through, Smoke and Shadow originally, it's kind of one of those. It seemed very similar in line to what the Kilo Five trilogy. Kind of was doing a little bit from a kind of that team dynamic a little bit. It's mm-hmm. not on a universal scale like Kilo 5 is, but this one's just kind of like her specific story with 
our shipmates, basically. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's a really good story. It's a lot more. It's a lot more human than, say, the Kilo Five trilogy. Mm-hmm. You know, that one focuses a little bit more on the military aspects, where, political. and yeah, political. Where this one, it's focuses more on the human side of the equation. I'm I'm sorry. I just I'm imagining Grim reading Mythos aloud. Oh, Thank geez. you, Halo Collector. There, there would be so many, so many recordings that would just, have to be done. I, I, I can just see the memes. Oh jeez. You know the History Channel aliens guy. Grim would work um, well in that kind of thing. Like it, <laughs> like just have him with the hands in the in the same position and. That would be it. <laughs> that that would be perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's a good point. Having Grim read something. I could see him maybe doing a short story, because I don't think he would last that long behind a microphone, keeping a very serious voice. <laughs> that's just not his style. That's not his personality. Yeah, no. Even... Even without the hairstyle, I think I think he has the personality to just kind of do the do the pose, and I think it would work. I, I think he has the face for it, and I think he can make the kind of awkward face. Hair hair aside, I I think he could do it. I don't know that I I can I, can you see it, GT? Uh, no, I honestly can't because I no. haven't watched any of that, so. Oh, just look up Aliens meme on Google, and mm. you'll know what it is. It's a funny meme. Well, but so definitely have, looking forward to this book. I'm looking forward to eventually getting around to it. <laughs> All right. Another couple of tweet reminders. The Spirit Halloween giveaway is still going on until November 2nd. You can register over at spirithalloween.com slash sweeps to enter in to get $10,000. And you'll receive a 20% off single item coupon to use in their store. And for Loot Crate, there is a code out for Halloween, and it's Halloween 25. It is 25% off all crates, and that includes Halo, the standard Loot Crate, Gaming Crate, any of the other theme crates that you want. There's Harry Potter, there's Fallout, there's a few other ones. Halloween 25 is 25% off. That works for a Halo Clerk crate. So if you go to podtechalert.com slash loot crate to go to Halo crate, and then if you use Halloween 25, you get 25% off all crates. They haven't announced the new theme because the latest theme, the Scout one, just ended three days ago. So hopefully by next week or the week after, we'll know what the next theme is going to be. So we've had Carter and we've had June. Wait, what do you think the next one's going to be, GT? Cat, cat. I I honestly, I honestly don't know, um, but I bet Cat's box. Is, yeah, she's in a warthog driving off a cliff. <laughs> oh, please put Cat in the warthog. Please put Cat in the warthog. Oh, three for three. You you got to. Yeah, that'll, that'll be the art that they include in it. The poster. <laughs> That's so bad. Oh. Cat driving a warthog would be the best thing. <laughs> oh, jeez. I think we know what George is going to be. It's, it's going to be him with the chain gun, and it's probably going to be. In, it's probably going to be in the stance that we saw the one cosplayer doing, anyways. That's mm-hmm. gonna, that's going to be George. And then, what would Emil's pose be? Yeah, it's hard to say which one the next one would be. Yeah, you're going to say cat. I'm. Hmm. We had June. I don't think Emil would be next. I'll say June, just to mix it up. You mean Emil? No. Oh, uh, 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 George. Sorry, I meant George. George. Yeah, I'm gonna say George. Okay. Because June's coming out in this one. <laughs> right. Right. Tends to saying Noble Six will be last. I think I'm. I'm. I'm tending to agree with that. I think Noble Six is going to be last. Yeah, I do agree with that. And it would be cool if. That you were able to customize Noble Six to be your character. If whenever they go about 
doing the last one if maybe you can pick the color the Noble Six is. Maybe not do the whole customization of customizing the armor or whatnot, but maybe being able to choose the color paint of Noble Six. Noble Six? Mm, yeah, I doubt they'll do that. Don't get me wrong, it'd be nice, but I really doubt they'll do that. Right. Because that something... would add a lot of cost. True. And it'd be a lot of planning. Mm-hmm. Or, or, or something to customize it. Because the whole point of Noble Six was making it your Spartan. That was the whole point mm-hmm. of even introducing that character in Breach. Granted, he does have a, an actual backstory in the lore of Halo, but it would be cool because of that was one of the things that it was brought into the universe for, brought into the game for, if there was some way that you could customize it. Well, it's also the first time we had that much control over the customization of the character. Yeah. We only had color in Halo 1 and 2. Halo 3 had the armor sets. And Halo Which 3, you could mix and match. Yeah, it was just arm, chest, helmet. Legs. Legs. Then Halo Reach is when it really took off. Yeah. Each arm, chest, each leg, helmet, help, helmet accessory, chest accessory. Yeah, it, 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 got, it got crazy in Reach. But a lot of people like that customization. A lot of people like the way Reach did it. Halo Five, and I liked how I could, you know, I could earn my Spartan points or whatever they were, and buy the credits. pieces that I won. Yeah, the cre- earn the credits, and I could just buy the pieces that I wanted. Mm-hmm. And some of them were behind achievement locks, which is fine. I'm I'm perfectly okay with that. Well, yeah. I'm hoping Halo Five has that. Style of customization because every a lot of people that you hear say that uh, it's almost well, it's not unanimous, obviously, but I think the majority of people probably think Reach had the best customization system of all the Halo games. Well, definitely, it's gone downhill ever since then. You don't need too much customization, you don't need too little, but Reach had that. I think Reach had a, a perfect balance. I think so. You know, you could really make the Spartan yours. And in Halo Reach, I mean, yeah, I saw duplicates of helmets, but with the accessories, they were a little bit different. And I don't think I ever saw a complete duplicate set of armor, you know, where everybody made the exact same choices on which arms to use, which chest to use, which legs to use, which helmet to use. Unless they were mim- mimicking one of the characters, like, you know, somebody wanted to look like Cat, or somebody wanted to look like Carter or George. Then, you know, I saw a duplication, but... Or if they're like a clan or something. Yeah. But even yeah. on clans, it's usually only one or two pieces. Yeah, and then the, cus- the color is custom to the user. Right. Yeah, I agree. Well, that is going to be it for tonight. Unless you have anything else to add, GT. All I got to say is I hope to see everybody tomorrow night on Halo 5 at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitch and Mixer. If you would like an invite, be sure to send me a message on Xbox Live at Godzilla T, and we'll get you in. Very nice. And for more streams, I also have my achievement stream on Sunday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Be working on the last Halo 2 par score I need, which will finish out the par score for the whole game, and then I'll start on ODST for that. And then hopefully next week there won't be any complications, and I'll be streaming again with the wife, playing more Halo Combat Evolved campaign, picking back up on. So no, we're on uh, the library. So yeah, the library is going to be next. That one's going to be fun. Not. You going to shortcut it, or are you going to play through the whole thing? She's already played through the whole thing. So the places where I can skip that aren't story essential, I might, I might skip those, just because it's frustrating enough. I'm I'm actually playing on heroic, so the lore difficulty. And it's already difficult enough. <laughs> so I'm, I might take some of those shortcuts just to. Well, I think only faster. one of them really 
cuts out any dialogue, and that's that very first one when you jump over the wall. I usually don't take that shortcut. I, I typically forget that shortcut exists. I think I, that's I, the only one that will actually skip dialogue. There, there are some where, like, if you jump through the big doors early, you won't get some of the dialogue that Guilty Spark has, but it's not story essential. Yeah. It's more praising himself and hee 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 I am a genius. <laughs> so check out those streams this week. And again, message GT to be invited to play on Fragon Fridays. It is open to everybody. The only thing that we have is if we do get a full lobby and there are people waiting to play, we'll rotate people out. I'm assuming we're going to be back on Halo 5 this week, or are we sticking with MCC? No, we're going to do Halo 5 this week. We're just going to alternate back and forth. Very nice. Unless the lobby overwhelmingly wants to play MCC. And we'll we'll see how that goes. I mean, I'm, I'm figuring if people are playing MCC for that night, it's probably going to be on the Insider for the playtime. But mm-hmm. yeah, Halo 5 might be good for the next couple of weeks just to give people that want to play Halo 5 a chance to do something. Yeah. For our Spartan company, we do have some slots open. So if you want to help help us getting the Achilles helmet, we will be more than happy to have you join us. We have 15 to 31 done. We have three of them that are really close. So our three close ones are getting a precision weapon kill without missing. And we need another 259 of those. Getting pretty close. I think by the end of the year, we'll probably have these three done. Killing an enemy with a melee, we still need another 1,041 of those. And then killing an enemy Spartan when your health is low and survive, we need another 921 of those. Next closest one is killing an enemy attempting to hijack or skyjack. And we need another 31 of those. So those are the four closest ones that we have to completing. And the ones that are always at the bottom are killing Marines and killing an enemy with Spartan with a shoulder bash. So that is our Spartan Company update. You can head over to podtechalert.com slash company if you want to uh, request enlistment. Uh, there's no restriction on us accepting anybody as long as we have space. And we just ask that you are active at least playing a few games every month or two months or so. You can check us out on other social media platforms. We are on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Mixer, Instagram, Twitch. Uh, if we have it, just search for Pot Tackler and you'll find us. We also have our Xbox Club, which you can join as well. Make sure you check out the podcasting network as part of a network of gaming specific shows, which includes Crit's Cast, a TF2 podcast. Podcast 76, an Overwatch podcast. Guardian Radio, which is a Destiny podcast. And then the Work in Progress and How to Murder Time, which are two other, not necessarily game-specific shows, but they're kind of uh, general gaming topic shows. You can find all those podcasts over at thepodcast.com and let them know particularly sent you. If you're just looking for other gaming podcasts to listen to, they're... Really well done, and they're great to listen to if you're interested in any one of those particular games. It's also a good reason to go over and support some fellow podcasts. So just P-O-D-K-A-S-T, P-H-E-P-O-D-K-A-S-T dot com. Make sure you check out the Halo Hub. It's a Discord for content creators and community people alike to share and promote content throughout the community. So T H T H E A T L O H U B dot com, the Halo Hub dot com will take you there. And there's some cool new things coming up for that. There's a couple other things for Potacular that hopefully we'll be doing as well. I need to get with uh, South, who's offered to still help us update our website and stuff. So hopefully getting a couple things around the holiday time for Potacular done as well. So plenty of changes over at the Halo Hub, plenty of changes over here. And we hope you guys will be along for the ride. Any final comments, GT? All done for tonight. All right. That'll be it. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks for those watching us via live stream. We got quite a bit of people over on the Mixer and a couple of people over on YouTube. 
really appreciate you guys uh, waiting it out for all the technical issues. Get them solved at some point or another. But appreciate your patience in the, the meantime. And we will catch you all next week on the podcast if we don't see you all in one of our streams over the coming week. Keep on fragging infected Spartans. <laughs> <laughs>